summer mean to you? Swimming in the pool? Drinking lemonade? To us, summer means this. Recognize this sound? This is the sound of a cicada. You might have heard more cicadas than you've actually seen. That's because they call from high up in the trees. But you might have seen some of these. Cicadas have an incredible life cycle. They spend most of their life underground sucking on the sap from the roots of trees. When they're ready to become an adult, the cicadas climb up out of the ground and grab onto a tree trunk. Then they shed or molt off their old skin. Once the cicada has shed its old skin, it is officially an adult with wings and the ability to make sound. Multiple males will sing together on a single tree, blasting their song for miles. The female hears this sound and flies towards the chorus. She then lands on the tree and will mate with the closest male. Why do cicadas make this sound? How do cicadas make these sounds? How do female cicadas hear this sound and then know what to do? Are we able to tell who is calling based on the sounds we hear? By the end of this video, you will know why insects make sounds, how insects differ from us in the way that they make and hear sound, and how you can identify insects based on their sounds. Hi, my name is Susan, and I learned about insect sounds while obtaining my PhD from Cornell University. I'm Mariah, and I learned about insect sounds while getting my bachelor's degree from Cornell University. Why don't you join us on an exciting adventure into the world of insect sounds? In its most basic definition, Communication happens when a sender makes a signal that's detected and interpreted by a receiver. Most living things need to communicate to convey information to one another. We humans use written and spoken language to communicate, but we also communicate in more abstract ways through facial expression and body language. Many animals also need to communicate in ways that to us might seem very abstract. To us, insects might sound like this. But perhaps what they're trying to tell each other is something more like this. Hey ladies, over here, I'm big and strong. Let me be your mate. Why do insects need to communicate? There are many reasons, but most of the time, insects need to communicate in order to find and court potential mates. Insects do not communicate with vocal cords like we do. Instead, they use three main means of communication. Vision, chemicals, which scientists call pheromones, that are really smells, and most importantly for us today, with sound. Insects like butterflies use vision to communicate. Moths rely primarily on smells. Katydids and cicadas use sound. There are advantages and disadvantages to using vision, chemical, and sound signals to communicate. My wings are very colorful. Watch my flight, I'm fast and strong. With vision, what you see is what you get. Insects can directly communicate their size or strength or quality. The biggest problem with using vision to communicate is that both individuals have to be able to see each other. For a small animal in a big world, this can be a big problem, especially if individuals are far apart or if there is limited visibility. So, many insects rely on smells called pheromones. Most of the time, a female insect releases a pheromone to attract a mate. Her signal conveys information like, I'm over here, boys. I haven't made it before. Come see if you measure up. The biggest problem with using pheromones to communicate is that smells can be really hard to follow, especially on a windy day, so... Many insects use sound. Sound is a great way to communicate because these messages can travel around obstacles and really far distances. Insects that are spaced really far apart or hiding in the grass can still communicate. Another word for sound is acoustic. The receiver of an acoustic signal can learn many things about the caller by his or her call. Like for example, what does the caller want? Do they want you to leave them alone or do they want a mate? They can also learn lots of other things like what is the sex of the caller? How old is the caller? How big is the caller? Or how strong is the caller? Ladies, I'm over here. Come and mate with me. Insects may speak on many of the same topics as we do, but they certainly do not make sounds the same way as us. 
Orthopterans are insects famous for the sounds they make, and they make sounds with stridulation, or the rubbing together of two body parts. Grasshoppers, crickets, katydids, and locusts are all orthopterans that use sound to communicate to a potential mate. Stridulation in insects works much the same way as rubbing your nail across the teeth of a comb. One part of the stridulatory apparatus is modified into teeth, some part of the wing or the leg, and another part of the body is rubbed against these teeth to make the sound. Crickets and katydids make stridulation by rubbing their wings together, whereas grasshoppers rub a leg against the abdomen. However, singing cicadas make sound in a very different way. Instead of rubbing two body parts together, cicadas have a special dome-shaped organ called a timbre, which pops in and out like the top of a can, or a clicker trainer that you might use when training a dog or a horse. When you or I hear insect sounds, we are using a pair of ears on either side of our head to pick up sound waves. Sound is really just the vibrations of molecules in the air. When I strike this tuning fork, the molecules in the air around the fork start to vibrate and come out from the fork in sound waves in all directions. The frequency of the sound waves is just a description of the speed at which those waves pass a certain point in space. Fast waves make high frequency, high pitch sounds, and slow waves make low frequency, low pitch sounds. Inside our ears are little hairs that vibrate from the waves generated by sound. Long, thin hairs vibrate more easily with high frequency, small waves, whereas short, thick hairs vibrate more easily with low frequency, long waves. The reason why we have two ears instead of one is that the distance between our two ears lets us tell the direction of sound, as sound waves hit one ear first. Most insects are too small to hear this way because the distance between either side of their head is too short. So insects have evolved hairs all over their body, and there are three basic types. The simplest is a hair called a syncilla. Similar to the hair in our own ears, when a sound wave reaches the hair on an insect's body, it bends, sending a signal up to the brain that the insect just heard something. Because insects can have multiple hairs all over the body, they can use information from multiple locations to tell them the direction of sound. Another way that insects can hear is through their tarsi, or feet. When the surface that an insect is standing on gets hit by a sound wave, the vibrations from that sound wave cause the insect's legs to vibrate and their joints to bend and flex. Some insects have special organs in their joints that allow them to decode the patterns of vibration. Because they can space their legs apart, they can feel which direction the sound is coming from based on which foot gets hit by the sound wave first. The most complex insect ear is called a tympanal organ. Orthopterans are famous for having a tympana, and crickets and katydids have an ear on the tibia of their front leg. Tympanal organs are areas of thinned exoskeleton, like the stretched fabric on the head of a drum. When a sound wave hits the tympanal organ, it vibrates at a specific frequency based on the sound wave, and a nerve at the back of the tympanal organ lets the insect feel the sound. Luckily, the entire outside of an insect's body is exoskeleton, so any part can be modified into a tympanal organ. Crickets and katydids have their ears on their legs because they can set their legs far apart, maximizing the distance between their two ears. But what is it that they're trying to hear? So how do insects decode all these vibrations to let them know who is calling and what the caller wants? Well, each species produces a song that is unique to its species. They can also make different sounds depending on what they want the receiver to know. For example, a katydid can make a warning sound that is brief, loud, and noisy, but its mating call is always produced in a characteristic rhythm. All insects are born with the knowledge of what their species' call should sound like in different situations. Most often, insects can tell how big a caller is based on the frequency of their song. Only big insects can make low-frequency tones. 
if I were an insect, I would know my species specific call sounded like this. But insects rarely call in isolation, so when I go out into the world, I have to find my song amongst all the noise. <laughs> so here's how this whole story comes together. The male of a species makes a specific call to attract females. Females hear the sounds coming from lots of different males and decode the vibrations to get all sorts of information about the males that are calling to them. The female then uses this information to choose a male to mate with. But with your ears, you too can crack the code. Just like birders can identify birds based on the songs they make, you can identify insects based on the timing and frequency of their calls. Let's go through some examples so you can learn how to identify insects too. If you hear something calling from high up in the trees on a hot summer day, it is most likely a cicada. Cicadas have a near continuous song like this. What sets a cicada call apart is that the beginning and end of the song have a sort of build up and wind down like this. If you hear an insect calling during the day and it's not a cicada, it's probably a cricket or a grasshopper. Crickets, we all know what they sound like. It's this. But what about a grasshopper? Grasshoppers make noisy little calls whose rhythm is hard to discern. So if you hear this song during the day coming from the ground in your front lawn, this is probably a grasshopper. The insect you're most likely to hear at night is a katydid. There are two types of katydids that you're probably already really familiar with. You might just not know it. The first is this. This is the common true katydid. This katydid is where all katydids got their name from. People a long time ago thought that this song sounded like Katy did, Katy didn't, and the name stuck. The second Katy did you are probably familiar with is this. This is the cone-headed Katy did, named after, of course, the shape of its head. Cone-headed Katy dids are very noisy, calling along roadsides and in fields at night. They are also some of the loudest insects we have, and so they tend to drown out other callers, but they have competition from the trees. This very tiny insect is a tree cricket. Though he may be small, his call is extremely loud because tree crickets call all together at once in a chorus. Tree cricket choruses sound an awful lot like cicadas or peeper frogs, but you know that you're listening to a tree cricket chorus if it's coming from a big group of trees and you're hearing it at night. Tree cricket songs are either continuous or a repetition of the same syllables over and over again like this. So, next time you're outside on a warm summer day or night, take a moment to open your ears and listen to the singing insects living and communicating in your environment. See if you can identify a cicada or a tree cricket, or maybe a single grasshopper or katydid calling from the ground or a nearby shrub. You will be amazed at the messages that you can intercept if you just listen closely to the singing insect orchestra around you.